This is commonly called a six marker because, well, it's worth six marks, but there is really a better way of describing it because not all of this type of question in this new GCCs are gonna be worth six marks. It's that asterisk that distinguishes it as a level of response or quality of written communication question. Hi, welcome to Gorilla Physics. I'm running through this paper, which is an OCR gateway physics paper. This one is a quality of written communication, or a six marker as they're commonly called, about condensation of operations. So make sure that when you do these questions that you plan before you go ahead and start writing. It's, kids get lost when they just start writing and before they know it, they filled up half the space with a load of old boots. <laughs> Okay, so it does mean that in this case you need to actually think about your structure, that matters for the answer, and you need to think about writing in sentences rather than bullet points as I've been doing otherwise. But I would still approach it in the same way, underline the command words describe and explain. How this apparatus could be used to show that mass is conserved during evaporation and condensation. So I actually need to explain this stuff, I need to describe what it is. So I also need to explain how this shows that mass is conserved. Okay, and how it does evaporation and condensation. So really, I would encourage you to always use the question to think about your structure. So I'm actually going to do a paragraph on describing what happens, and then a paragraph explaining how that shows that mass is conserved. So before uh, you put your pen to paper with one of these quality of com communication um, questions, always briefly think and briefly plan what your structure is going to be like. So firstly, let's just describe. Liquid is heated here, and so it boils. It's cooled in this condenser, and so it condenses. Okay, how this apparatus should be used to show that mass is conserved. So really I have to say what conservation of mass is and how we can actually do something to show that. So we can measure the mass before and afterwards. We're going to use top pan balance for that. So get that extra detail in there. Measure the mass with the top pan balance before and after the experiment. The conservation of mass is that they will be equal, so I don't need to really say that now. Okay, that's my first paragraph, now I need to explain that. Well, this is because all of the what, I'm going to say water, all of the liquid that was in the round bottom flask is then evaporated, and all of that evaporated liquid, that gas, is then condensed back into that same mass of liquid. Okay, so providing that there's no like liquid like trapped inside the condenser, then there is going to be an equal mass in this beaker as started in this round bottom flask. So there could be like some drops basically like um, in this condenser, uh, meaning that this might be slightly lower. The mass the beaker at the end will be the same as the mass of liquid at the start. So let's just reread our, th our answer now, and I'd always encourage you to do that. Did you cover what you planned to cover? Have I described it? Liquid is heated in the round bottom flask, and so it boils. It cools in the condenser so it condenses. Now that actually is a level one response. Two marks. I've described that it boils where it boils. I've described that it condenses where it condenses. Now if you look, that seems pretty obvious, but if you look back through the question, they haven't actually said where it gets condensed or where it gets boiled. So you do get marks for saying that. You've added value to what they have actually told you. Measure the mass. They haven't, told, they haven't talked about measuring the mass. So measure the mass with the top pan balance before and after the experiment. The two masses will be equal. This is what the law of conservation of mass states. So that is description of the law of conservation of mass. So now I am on a um, level four, sorry, now I'm on a level two response and I've got four marks because I've said what the experimenter needs to do and I've said what his results or their results will show. Well, it's he, isn't it? It's John in this case. All of the liquid that is evaporated was also condensed. So now I'm explaining, providing that no liquid remains in the condenser, the mass of the beaker, the end will, will be the same as the mass of liquid at the start. So I might just add, just to cover myself a little bit, this may mean that the measured mass at the end is slightly lower than the measured mass at the start. 
I've said too much now, I've written in there. I've written a bit more, but don't worry about doing that because as examiners, we will find those little extra bits there. Okay, so um, calculate the energy needed to change 2.5, calculate the energy needed to change 2.5 of kilograms of water into steam. The specific latent heat of vaporization of the water is 2.26 times 10 to the 6 joules. Okay, so I need an equation, and luckily this is one I don't need to remember. So in a formula sheet at the front, I have the equation, the energy, uh, provided to something is equal to the mass times the specific latent heat. The energy for a change of state is equal to the mass times the specific latent heat. So now I just need to put numbers in. Are they sensible units? Yeah, I've got kilograms, I've got joules, I want lots of joules. So we have two marks, so that's a clue as well that there isn't going to be much of a unit conversion going on. 2.5 times 2.26 times 10 to the 6. Use a calculator for sure this time. 2.2 times 2.26 times 10 to the 6. Hope you saw me using the times 10 to the button there. Very, very useful thing because it will treat that as just one number. Make sure you can do that. 5, 6, 5, and then four zeros. Okay, and that's how they want their answer given. So that is how I will give it, although I could convert that into standard form. Um, and why not? Okay, so if I think about the decimal place, one, two, three, four, five, or six. Five point six five times ten to the six joules. Okay, either mark. But essentially, there's a mark for plugging the numbers in the right place, and there's a mark for the answer. So I'm Kit, and this is Guerrilla Physics. We're all about you understanding more, so you get more confident. Enjoy physics more, and do better in the exams. Thank you very much for watching.